Welcome to Chapter 16.3, The Age of Absolutism, Parliament Triumphs in England. From about 1485 until 1603, England was ruled by the Tudors. While believing in divine right, the Tudors also recognized the value of good relationships uh, with Parliament. This was not the view of the first Stuart king, however, James I. He inherited the throne after Elizabeth I died childless in 1603, and he claimed absolute power. Parliament, however, resisted the king's claim. James clashed often with Parliament over money, and James also um, was at odds with the dissenters, the Protestants, who disagreed with the Church of England. One such group, the Puritans, wanted simpler services and a more democratic church with no bishops. In 1625, Charles I inherited the throne. He, too, behaved like an absolute monarch. Tensions between Charles and Parliament escalated into a civil war, and the English Civil War lasted from 1642 until 1651. Supporters of Charles were also called Cavaliers. The supporters of the Parliament were known as Roundheads. Oliver Cromwell was the leader of the parliamentary forces, guiding them to victory. In January of 1649, Charles I was beheaded. The House of Commons has abolished monarchy and declared England a republic under Cromwell, called the Commonwealth. Many new laws reflected Puritan beliefs. Cromwell did not tolerate open worship for Catholics. However, he did respect the beliefs of other Protestants, and he welcomed Jews back into England, and eventually the people just got tired of the strict uh, Puritan ways. Cromwell died in 1658, and two years later, Parliament invited Charles II to return to England as king. Charles II's successor, James II, was forced from the English throne in 1688, and the Protestants feared that he planned to restore the Roman Catholic Church to power in England. Parliament offered the crown to James's Protestant daughter, Mary, and her husband, William. However, William and Mary had to accept the English Bill of Rights, and this helped to establish a limited monarchy. This bloodless overthrow of James II was also known as the Glorious Revolution. During the next century, Britain's government became the constitutional government, whose powers were defined and limited by law. A cabinet, or a group of parliamentary advisors who set pol policies, developed. In essence, British government was now an olig oligarchy, or a government that was run by a few powerful men. England took a different path than France did in the 1600s. Though English rulers attempted to increase their authority, Parliament began to expand its own influence. The Tudor dynasty was relatively new to the monarchy. They had, um, Henry VIII was only the second generation. Um, his father had inherited the throne, or rather, had been given the throne when he and his wife had married to solidify a, a union of two houses that had been fighting over the throne of England called the War of the Roses. So when Henry's older brother died and Henry was catapulted into the position of king, um, he was fairly insecure and new to the throne, and one of the major things that he needed in order to secure a dynasty was to have a male heir. And he hoped to have that with his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, who was the, the granddaughter of uh, Isabella and Ferdinand in Spain. After uh, almost 20 years of marriage, uh, it became clear that uh, Catherine of Aragon would not be having any sons, uh, she, they did have one daughter who was named Mary, uh, but eventually it became clear that Henry, if he was going to have any male son, heirs, he needed to figure out a way to get out of the marriage. And when he tried to annul that marriage, the, the Pope, who was um, actually un, physically under the power of Charles V at the time uh, and could not give him a dispensation for his, his divorce, um, Henry decided to divorce his first wife and marry Anne Boleyn. Uh, with whom he had his second child, a daughter by the name of Elizabeth. Um, eventually, as the story goes, Elizabeth uh, inherits the throne from her older sister and her younger brother. Um, and eventually, these, these different Tudor monarchs were 
though they tried to be all powerful, had to work with Parliament in order to、um, maintain their power. Both had had to seek the approval of Parliament、uh, if they wanted to stay in control, and as a result, Parliament became accustomed to being in control. In fact, Elizabeth's skills at handling Parliament helped her to be a very popular ruler, who came to be and she came to be known as Good Queen Bess. She often used her、um, feminine wiles to try to get her way. Harmony between the monarch and the Parliament, however, ended when Elizabeth the First died. Elizabeth the First died childless, and the throne went to James Stuart, who had who was King of Scotland. Um, his mother was Mary, Queen of Scots,、um, and she had been under house arrest for many years when she finally died,、uh, and the throne passed to James the First, who had been raised by、uh, his Calvinist tutor,、uh, John Knox. And when James the First came to the,、uh, the throne in England, he threw off all of those、um, uh, religious barriers, and he was known for being a, quite a party. Uh, party person, he clashed a lot with Parliament though because he liked to spend money, and but he needed to go to Parliament in order to get more money. So、um, through though he promised to rule England、uh, with English customs, he tried to assert the dominant belief of the age, which was that、uh, that of divine right. James was finally forced to call a parliament when he was absolutely、um, destitute and needed money. However, when Parliament wanted to discuss foreign policy or other things besides money,、um, before they voted on the funds, he got mad and he dissolved the Parliament and he、uh, collected the taxes with his own strength, which was actually very、uh, damaging to his.、Uh, Reputation in England, James his、uh, James also clashed with a group called the Dissenters, and they were、um, a religious group that believed that the Church of England was far too Catholic and needed to pu- be purified. Thus, we get the name Puritans. James the first son, Charles the first, inherited the throne in 1625, and like his father, he also tried to behave as an absolute monarch. He dis- he dissolved the parliament in 1629. However, Charles sa- had to summon the parliament again in 1640 because he needed funds again, like his father. The Scottish were un- under in a rebellion, and he needed to raise troops. When it met, though, Parliament launched its own revolt against the king. Parliament、uh, tried to lead a an English civil war. And when Charles tried to arrest the radical members of Parliament, they escaped by and raised an army of their own. The English Civil War lasted from 1642 until 1651. On one side were the supporters of Charles I. They were called the Cavaliers, and they were often from wealthy noble families. On the other side, they were supporters of the Parliament, and they called themselves Roundheads, or rather, probably they were. Nicknamed roundheads because of their、um, bull haircuts,、um, but they were country gentry or town-dwelling manufacturers and Puritan clergymen. The roundheads were led by the skillful general Oliver Cromwell, and the defeat of the Cavalier and with the defeat of the Cavaliers, Charles the First was tried and beheaded in 1649. I chose this picture because it shows a cavalier family, without their father, who has run away to try to save himself,、um, and they are,、uh, the mom is holding her breath because her son is being questioned by a、uh, roundhead、uh, man, and he is, she's hoping that he will not tell her, tell the、uh, questioners where the father is hidden or where he is,、um, and so it's a tense moment. So I just I thought this was a very telling picture of history. Parliament declared England a republic, known as the Commonwealth, under Cromwell's leadership.、Um, Charles the Second, the uncrowned heir, attacked Ireland and、uh, attacked from Ireland and Scotland, and Cromwell 
using his troops, crushed the uprising. Cromwell also suppressed a group called the Levellers, who wanted the poor to have more say in the government. And in 1653, Cromwell began to rule as a dictator, taking the title Lord Protector. The problem was that Cromwell became just as arbitrary as Charles ever had been. He realized that Parliament wasn't easy to lead, and so he himself dissolved Parliament several times. He clamped down on all social evils. He closed the theaters uh, and other forms of entertainment. And in 1588, Cromwell died, and his son um, tried to rule in his stead, just like the uh, royal, like a dynasty. Um, but the son wasn't up to ruling, and he realized his own uh, inabilities, and so he stepped down graciously, and Parliament then turned to Charles, II, Charles I's son, who had run away to uh, the Netherlands, and asked him to come and be their new, queen, uh, their new king in 1660. This was called the Restoration, but there, was, there were certain restrictions that Charles II was supposed to follow. Parliament was quite disturbed about Charles II's toleration of Catholics. He tried to remain as independent of, of Parliament as his father had been, um, and he got loans from uh, his brother-in-law, Louis XIV, and he also promised to help support French issues whenever he could within his own government. Um, but he uh, would... and. Louis XIV wanted him to promise that he would uh, profess Catholicism openly and publicly, but he never did that because he knew that would have been political suicide. But the people were definitely happy when Charles reopened the theater um, and he passed the Habeas Corpus Act, which made it illegal for the government to arbitrarily hold anyone without officially charging them of a crime first. Um, but in 1665, during his reign, the bubonic plague returned to England, and the following year, a huge fire engulfed London and completely obliterated uh, whole sections of London. And it's interesting, though, that, that after that terrible fiasco, the plague never broke out in England again, or at least not in London. Charles supporter, supported public reconstruction projects, and he died in 1685 without any legitimate children. So England was left yet again without a clear heir, and the Parliament then turned to James II, Charles' brother, and he, he became king. Well, James II was actually the older brother of Charles II, um, and the reason why they'd passed over him was because he was Catholic uh, openly. But not only that, he was also extremely tactless, and um, he was quite old, and he was a firm believer in the divine right. Um, and Parliament tolerated him because he had two children who were Protestant, two girls, and this is why he was a valuable asset to the Parliament. Uh, he had previously mar been married to a Protestant and had two daughters. And then James did something very unforgivable in the Parliament's eyes. He, his first wife died, and he married a French Catholic princess and had a son, which would have turned out to be the next monarch, and the son was Catholic. This was the moment when Parliament said, enough is enough, and they began to move towards a, another beheading or revolution. We don't know, because uh, Ch uh, Charles II knew could read the, the signs, and he packed up his bags, and he quickly left. This event became known as the Glorious Revolution, and this led to the Act of Settlement in 1701, where Parliament established the right to grant the throne to whomever they wished. Before being crowned, William and Mary had to accept a few Acts of Parliament, known as the English Bill of Rights. This required that the monarch... Um, be summoned to Parliament regularly, and it gave the House of Commons the power of the purse, and it reinstated the right of trial by jury and affirmed the principles of habeas corpus. It also banned any Roman Catholic from ever coming to the throne again. Thus, the Glorious Revolution created a limited monarchy. 
The English rulers had to govern the par uh, in partnership with Parliament, which was quite radical for that time. And during the next century, Britain evolved a constitutional government in which government's power was limited by law. Political parties emerged in the 1600s, and the two main parties were the Tories and the Whigs. The cabinet evolved in the 1700s to help advise the king, and in time, this grew in official status. The head of the cabinet became known as the prime minister. However, during the 1700s, the British government was still an oligarchy, with the right to vote limited to very few male property owners. The upper classes squeezed, by, uh, squeezed the poor by buying up their land and evicting tenant farmers, which they legalized through their control of parliament. However, the middle class was growing and it produced talented entrepreneurs who would help to bring about the Industrial Revolution.